Hey, it's HJ. Um, welcome to my channel. If it's your first time, my name is Hillary Jane. Uh, I like to talk about scripture a lot. I like to make random videos about fun stuff. This happens to be one of those scripture videos. I want to talk about guarding your heart today. And so if that's something you're interested in, keep watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Do that right now. Do it. Click it. Okay. So I know growing up as a young Christian girl, I was always told, guard your heart. And it was 99% of the time talking about boys or how people can treat you badly like girl you better not hang around him or you better not be her friend you better guard your heart because that's a bad person or they could corrupt you in some way or another or xyz elemental p fill in the blanks this scripture we're gonna read 20 through 27 is actually talking about you guarding your heart from you what a lot of times we read chapter 23 without reading the scripture above it and without reading the scripture below it to give it context. And that's really a tricky thing and a scary thing that people can do because you can, without any context, you can insert your own meaning into anything. That's why sometimes, have you ever had a friend come up to you and be like, oh my gosh, I have the craziest thing to tell you. And your mind is just going a million miles an hour because it's like, what's the details? What's the details? What's the context? What does that mean? Is it something good? Is it something bad? You have no context to go off of with just this sentence. I have something crazy to tell you. Context is really important to understand what the person is trying to communicate to you. So the reason why I want to read 20 through 27 is so we can get the full understanding of what does it mean when he's saying guard your heart? If you start um, in 20, it says, my son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. So 20 through 22 is talking about the word of God. 23, and this is the key one that everybody always uses for boyfriends. Keep your heart with all vigilance, or your translation may say, guard your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. So if you continue, he's going to tell us what this means. Put away from you crooked speech and put devious talk far from you. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet that all of your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or the left. Turn your foot away from evil. Verses 24, 25, 26, and 27 are all things that you do and you put in place and you strive for to guard your heart from yourself. Only you can speak your own crooked speech. Nobody else can speak words out of your mouth. Only you can look around and choose to look forward. Nobody else moves your eyes for you. Only you can ponder the path of your feet and make sure that your ways are sure. Only you can choose not to swerve to the right or the left and turn your foot away from evil. And so many times we try to make this scripture about somebody else. They're doing something bad. They're sinning. They, 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 they. I need to guard my heart from them, which is a true principle, right? But this scripture is talking about you choosing holiness, you guarding your heart from yourself, from your own sinful desires, from your own crooked speech, from your own eyes wanting to wander to lusts of the world from your own self wanting to turn left and right and not walking down the narrow, straight path of righteousness. How do we do that though? It's like, okay, yeah, that's true. I do need to guard my own heart from myself. I do want sinful things. I do do wrong things. I do think and say and look at things that continue to take my heart, which we talked about this morning, which I thought was really great because I had been talking about guarding your heart multiple times this week. And then today, Pastor Mark, my pastor at Crossway Church was... Um, talking about how our hearts are clay and our hearts were stone, right? Before we were saved, but then Jesus turns our heart and makes it into flesh. And now our heart is malleable. And what we look at, what we talk about, where we go, what we think about, where we walk, what path we take, it'll turn our heart either hardened from Jesus or make us more holy and make our heart turn more holy to be like him. But how do I do that? It's so hard. Let's look back up to 20 through 22. Be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healing to all of their flesh. 
It's really hard to be looking at things you're not supposed to, to be thinking evil, gossipy, mean-spirited, um, non-gracious thoughts, or to be speaking those words whenever the word of God is ever before you, whenever you're being attentive to the word, you're hearing the word, you're not letting the word escape from your sight. These words the Holy Spirit uses to transform us so that we can guard our hearts from ourselves. It's not just something we do. Like I can go read a book and it's not gonna change me the same way the word of God does because the Holy. this is the only word of God that the Holy Spirit promises to engrave on our hearts and in our memories and in our minds and change us and make us more like Jesus and take that malleable heart that we have and make sure it's being molded into the image of God and godliness and not letting it go unguarded, right? It's so easy to look outward and to see other people's flaws, to see other people's sins, to see other people's downfalls and want to guard ourselves from them. So if you are in a season of life where you feel like your heart is hard to the Lord, where you don't feel and you don't desire for spiritual things that are holy and pleasing and godly and upright, and you desire sinful things majority of the time, and it's just a season that you've fallen into, look at how you put yourself there. Only we can put ourselves there. Nobody can do anything to us to put us in a season where our heart is hard against the Lord. What have you done? How have you not guarded your heart to get where you are? Repent of it. God says that if we um, confess ourselves one to another, we'll be healed. Re uh, confess your sin to some Christian that you can, that can hold you accountable to it so that you can be healed. Repent of your sin um, to Christ and he will shine his face on you and he will show grace to you and he will um, help you by his word. And that's the third thing. Don't just stop there and say, okay, I'm good. I'm back. Thank, I, thank you, Jesus. But be diligent to keep the word of God open and in front of you and on your heart so that you don't fall back and so you keep your heart guarded. Yeah, that's all I got to say. All right, love you guys. I hope that helped. Um, I've been thinking about this. It's been helping me a lot, actually. I love you guys. And um, yeah, it's hot in front of this light. I gotta go. <laughs> I love you guys. Bye.